hi welcome back to my channel thank you for watching and for subscribing and if you're just visiting please consider subscribing so a while back before i disappeared from youtube I did a video about fragrance twins, basically talking about similar fragrances and picking one that I think is the best or the best in my opinion. You seem to enjoy that video and I asked you if you would like to see other parts because I definitely have a lot of fragrance twins in my collection. You said yes, you would like to see other parts. So today I'm finally bringing you part two. So first, let's talk about three fragrances. Now, if I don't have a specific bottle, uh, I will put up a picture. So here you can see two bottles, but there is one more that I'm adding to this comparison. So we have Herbapura from Zerjov, Dahab from Kajal, and I'm also adding Kirke, if I pronounce it correctly, from Tiziana Terenzi. I have sampled Kirke. I used to have um, a little sample or decant of that fragrance, so I know exactly how it smells. Now, all of these fragrances are definitely very, very similar. They're all kind of very musky, very fruity, sweet fragrances. I mean, they are potent. All of them are very, very potent. What is the biggest difference? Well, I would say that to my nose, Kirky has the strongest musk note. It's very, very strong. I'm not usually afraid of strong musk, but for me, it's a little bit overwhelming. I feel like in Herbapura, musk is a little bit more subdued. Now, Dahab is very similar, but there is also a difference there because it's a little bit more spicy and there's also, I think, a sour apple added to it, or maybe it's a green apple, which adds uh, an element of sourness, which kind of distinguishes it a little bit from the other two because the other two are very sweet. So, if I had to recommend one out of these three, which one would I choose? I would go with Dahab from Kajal. Although I love Herbapura as well. Like I said, Kirky is a little bit too screechy. The mask in it is a little bit too screechy, a little bit too strong for me. Not the case with Herbapura, but if I had to recommend one, I would go with Dahab just because I think it is a little bit more interesting. It has that sour apple, which I really like, and it has a little bit of spiciness, which also adds a really nice element, makes it a little bit more interesting. So this is my choice out of these three. Next, let's talk about um, very hyped up fragrance in recent times. Now, I'm talking about Baby Cat from YSL. I do have a decant of this fragrance, but obviously I'll put up a picture here of the full bottle. And I'm going to compare it to three other fragrances. We have Lune Feline from Atelier des Ors. We have number five from Rosendo Mathieu. And I'm also going to compare it to Vanna Gloria from Laboratorio Olfativo. And I've actually talked about this fragrance on my channel when I was testing some new fragrances. So I do have a decant of that as well. Now, let's start with Baby Cat. Um, I actually got a decant um, in the middle of summer. And to be honest, I sort of uh, didn't give it a chance, you know, for a number of reasons. One, it was really hot at the time, and I, I definitely don't think this fragrance is suited for hot weather. I think it is definitely more suited for colder weather. Two, I was going through a ton of different things at the time and was really preoccupied. So, you know, I kind of tried it. I thought, okay, it smells nice, but it's very similar to these other fragrances, which I got right away, and I kind of put it aside. And once the weather cooled down this fall, I thought, well, now 
let me actually try it, properly try it. And I got to tell you, I fell in love with the fragrance. It is absolutely stunning. I am definitely going to get a full bottle of that fragrance. It is gorgeous. I think it is definitely worth the hype. So what is the fragrance about? And by the way, I'm not reading any notes in this video, just talking about what the fragrances smell like. So Baby Cat is kind of very smoky, resinous, ambery vanilla. In the opening, I really get a lot of kind of smoky, dark elements. And when it develops on the skin, a lot more sweetness and vanilla and kind of this smooth, warm, amber touches coming out. Gorgeous. Now, it is similar to the other three. It is definitely similar to Lune Feline. However, I would say that Lune Feline is spicier. There is a lot of cardamom in this fragrance, and I really get a lot of cardamom, especially in the opening. So it is much smokier and much deeper, almost getting close to that burnt rubber smell, which I definitely don't get in Baby Cat. It is also similar to number five from Rosendo Mathieu. Um, but I would say the opening is very similar. But when the fragrances start developing, they actually become quite different, quite different. Uh, like I said, Baby Cat becomes very warm and rich and sweet. And, you know, uh, Rosendo Mathieu, kind of difficult to explain, but it becomes more musky and floral and a bit sweet, but definitely not as sweet as Baby Cat. Now, the third one, Vanna Gloria from Laboratorio Olfativo. You know, it's interesting because the only other person I heard talk about this fragrance or compare it to Baby Cat was Sebastian. And you know, when I heard him, I thought, yep, yeah, I totally agree. Because I think that Baby Cat most resembles Vanna Gloria. It's very, very similar. It has very similar qualities. It is smoky. It is rich. It is deep. It is resinous. The only sort of small difference I would say to me is in a dry down, it doesn't become quite as sweet as Baby Cat does, at least on me. So there is a small difference, but otherwise, they're very similar. So which one is the winner here? If I had to choose one, which one would I choose? And which one would I recommend? I think you probably guessed by the way that I talked about it. Yes, I would go with Baby Cat. Although I think all four are beautiful fragrances, quite similar fragrances, but at the end of the day, Baby Cat wins for me. Next, Let's compare these two fragrances. We have Changing Constance from Penhaligons and Minui Adami from Fragrance Dubois. Now, this combination has been talked about a lot. I've also talked about it on my channel, so I won't spend too much time on these two. Both of them are very similar. They're sweet, they're spicy, they're a little bit uh, smoky. Yeah, that's basically it. That's how I would describe them. Now, what are the differences? Well, Changing Constance is a little bit sweeter to, to my nose. And Minui and Demi is a little bit spicier. And it has a bit of um, coffee added in. It just gives it a hint of coffee. It's very light, but I still get it. So these are kind of the main differences, but overall, fragrances are similar. Um, maybe, yeah, let me add one more thing. I find uh, Minui Ademi a little bit lighter and Changing Constance a little bit heavier, maybe denser type of fragrance. Now, neither one is amazing performer. Perhaps Changing Constance is worse, <laughs> but Minui Ademi is not amazing at lasting power either. So if I had to choose one, which one would I choose? Well, here I would go with Minui Ademi. I have been really, really loving this fragrance ever since I tested it. 
I don't know, there's something about it. I actually, you know, as much as I like heavy heaters, I actually enjoy the lightness of this fragrance. Like uh, right now, Changing Constance feels a little bit heavy, a little bit too dense, maybe a little bit too sweet for me. This one just has some kind of lightness in it, some kind of airiness in it, and I really, really enjoy it. So for me, I would recommend Minui at Denny. Next, we have this summery combination, which I just love, love, love during warm weather. So we have Malibu Party in the Bay from Simone Andrioli, Virgin Island Water from Creed, and Still Life in Rio from Olfactive Studio. Now, all of these are definitely summery scents. Um, they all smell like some kind of exotic drink, sort of like pina colada. They have coconut, they have sugar, they have rum, they have lemon or lime, you know, and they have a bunch of other notes. But essentially, they smell like pina colada to me. Now, what are the differences? So I would say that Malibu Party in the Bay probably, um, it is probably the brightest scent. It has the most pronounced lime note in it. Like it's really zingy, it's really bright, it's really fresh, it's very juicy, it's very delicious. Absolutely outstanding scent. Very, very bright. Virgin Island water is very, very similar. The difference is that perhaps the note of lime is not quite as pronounced. And overall, I would say the combination is a little bit sharper, just a little bit. Now, uh, Still Life in Rio is probably a little bit more different from the other two. It is a little bit creamier. It's a bit denser. Um, all of the notes are kind of more rounded, you know, whereas Virgin Island water is sharper than I would say Still Life in Rio is just the opposite of that. It is rounder. None of the notes really stand out, you know. Yes, there is coconut, there are some citruses. Citruses are not very pronounced. There's definitely some smoothness to the scent and it's not quite as bright. But, you know, overall, again, very, very similar scent profile. So if I had to recommend one out of these three, what would I go with? Well, for those of you that have watched me for a while, you're probably not going to be surprised because you've heard me rave about this fragrance ever since I got it. It is Malibu Party in a Bay. Love it. It has become one of my staples in the summer, really. I just love the brightness of this fragrance fragrance. You know that really pronounced lime. It is so juicy. It is so mouthwatery. I just love it. And it has beautiful performance on me. It lasts. It projects. It's outstanding. So if I had to recommend one out of these three, I would definitely go with this one. Okay, so we've talked about a very summery combination. Now let's talk about something very sweet, delicious, and gourmand. So here we have three fragrances. We have Lyra from Zurichov, Love and Crime from Ex Idolo, and Vanille from Frank Buckley. Well, Lyra, I mean, I think we all know about Lyra at this point. Uh, it smells like delicious lemon pie. There is a note of blood origin here, but I get lemon, and so it's just a delicious lemon pie. Well, it's kind of all of them smell <laughs> similar to that. Now, um, love and crime. It also smells like a delicious pie, but here I do actually get orange, and I think there is orange added here, and that's what I get. So for me, this is the biggest difference between Love and Crime and Lyra is that I get lemon in Lyra and I get orange in Love and Crime. Now, Vanille from Frank Beauclay, which is probably the most affordable option out of the three. It is also a beautiful fragrance. Here, I get um, a little bit more 
citruses. I think there is a grapefruit added here and I do get that it's, it's a little bit fresher. It's a little bit even just slightly tart, but you, you still get that beautiful vanilla and that uh, you know, some kind of pie or baked good kind of vibe. It's just that it is a little bit brighter and citruses are a little bit more pronounced than in the other three. This is a really difficult choice for me because I absolutely love, love, love all three of them. You know, they haven't gotten old for me. I know this is a very popular scent profile at this point, but I still love all three. However, if I had to choose and if I had to recommend, I would go with, I would go with Love and Crime from X Idolo, which is probably <laughs> the most expensive version if we're counting per mil, because this is a 30 mil bottle and I'm not sure if they actually have bigger bottles. But the reason I chose this one is only because of its performance. This is the best performing scent out of the three. It lasts the best, it projects the best. And that's why I've chosen it. Now, if performance is not that important to you, then really choosing any of these three, you cannot go wrong. You just can't go wrong. All of them are stunning. And this, I think, is going to be our last comparison for this video. Here, we're going to compare three fragrances. Nightfall Patchouli from Carolina Herrera, Fera from Bercourt, and I'm also adding Ojan from Parfums de Marly, which I have sampled many, many times. Now, all of these fragrances are extremely close. They're all spicy, sweet, slightly chocolatey, slightly smoky, kind of a little bit earthy fragrances that definitely have a bit of patchouli, maybe have some ambery touches. They're just gorgeous, especially for colder weather. Absolutely beautiful. Now, I would say that Farrah from Bricourt is probably the sharpest of the three, where, you know, maybe you're missing a bit of that so, sort of um, quality of all the notes and the chords being blended together. It feels like they're a little bit sharp, like they kind of um, stand out a little bit, like it could have been blended just a touch more, just a touch better. Nightfall Patchouli is outstanding. It's a high quality fragrance. It is beautiful. You get this uh, probably the most pronounced patchouli note out of the three, but it's this gorgeous chocolatey patchouli with some spices with the cinnamon. I don't know if there are other spices. It's warm. It's beautiful. Just beautiful. And Ojan, I would say, is very, very similar. I mean, really, I cannot describe it any differently, you know? Um, the only difference in Ojan is perhaps it is just leaning just a touch very, very small touch more to the masculine side, although all of them, I believe, are completely unisex. So out of these three, which one would I recommend? Which one would I choose if I had to choose only one? Well, I would go with Ojan from Parfums de Marley. Why? Well, uh, it's kind of a toss-up for me uh, as to how much I like them between this one and uh, Carolina Herrera Nightfall Patchouli. But Nightfall Patchouli is so expensive. It's a little more difficult to find, I think. And so for that reason, I'm going from Ojan from Parfums de Marley. Although I think that Nightfall Patchouli is just as beautiful. Uh, like I said, it's just that I think this Confidentials line is a little bit harder to find, although it has definitely gotten easier than it was a couple of years ago. So there you go. These are some of my fragrance twins that I wanted to talk to you about today. Definitely let me know if you're still enjoying this video format, if you would like to see part three, because yes, surprisingly, I do have enough fragrances to do at least one more part. So definitely let me know down in the comments. Also, 
please don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to comment, to like this video if you enjoyed it, or let me know if you didn't enjoy it. That's okay as well. Thank you for watching. I will see you soon in the next video. Bye.